In this section, we will look at AutoCAD for the very first time. If you've cheated and have already peeked at it, that's okay, don't worry. It's probably even a good idea. But if you've used AutoCAD once or twice, then you might not even want to go through this section before either. I'm just going to point out some of the key features and areas on the user interface of AutoCAD. So you want to create some brand new fantastic design with AutoCAD. Well, that's great. The very first step is an obvious one. You need to turn it on. If you haven't installed the software yet, please refer to the section in this video series that discusses that process. One thing that you're going to find commonplace in AutoCAD is that there will always be multiple ways of doing anything, from just drawing a line, saving a file, from erasing something, or from closing AutoCAD altogether. Well, that's also true when it comes to turning it on. So to start AutoCAD, either double click the AutoCAD icon that's on your desktop, which is typically how I do it. Or you can go to your start button on your desktop, the all programs, Autodesk, AutoCAD, and then click on the AutoCAD icon. Either way, you're going to get to where you want to go. Another thing you can do is to browse to an AutoCAD file, which ends in a .dwg in Windows Explorer. Double click it and it will open up the file and open up AutoCAD. So as you can see, there are a lot of ways to open up AutoCAD. So when you open up AutoCAD for the very first time, you're going to see a splash screen and then you're going to see what's called the welcome screen. That's this right here. It has a lot of different areas in it and we're going to talk about it a little bit later on. You can close that if you want and you don't ever have to see it again. Otherwise, it can come up every time. It's up to you. Throughout this video, I'm going to use the term out of the box. When I say something is out of the box, I'm referring to the default settings of AutoCAD. So out of the box, AutoCAD will open the default template file when you turn on AutoCAD. That's this file right here. See all these grids and lines? You're actually inside an AutoCAD file. So you can start drawing right away, like with the line command, and you can just start drawing lines, making any shape that you would like. You can even add some circles, a rectangle, and you can just go right ahead and start dimensioning these shapes. There you go. If you don't want to start working in this file that pops right up, you can open up another file to work on. We'll go into that in greater detail later on, but I wanted to give you a run through of everything so that it will make more sense to you when we detail it out. So let's take a look around the interface here so that you can familiarize yourself, what everything looks like, what the areas do, what the terms are that we're going to be used for them. So this big open area on your screen right here is called the drawing area. This is where your drawing objects will go. As you move the mouse around, the crosshair moves left and right. It goes left and right, up and down, diagonal, in a circle, etc. When you move into the interface area, the crosshairs turn into an arrow. That's up here, the interface area. And this area, which you're going to interface with the software, has different sub areas and different names for them all. This big red A design up here is called the application menu. Think of it as an old file button and pull down menus that software used to have. So the application button, if you just left click on it, it'll bring up a lot of different options for you. This application button is where you go to open files, close them, save them, print, along with some other options. And we'll talk about some of those later on. Just to the right of the application menu, this is called the QUAT, Q-U-A-T. That stands for Quick Access Toolbar. So we have quick access to some tools. So we have new, open, save, save as, plot. We have undo and redo, and this here controls our workspace. We'll talk about that later on. The main interface tool is the drawing area, because that's where your drawing is going to take place. But the main tool for entering commands is the ribbon, and that's this right here. It's a ribbon that spans across your screen. The ribbon is a tabbed area that contains panels within each tab. Each panel has a themed set of commands in them. Switching tabs will activate different panels, and if you click on the command icons, that will execute the commands. If we go to here, the Home tab, and left click on it, that brings up our main tools that we're going to use the majority of the time. These are for 2D drafting and a little bit of text, a little bit of block manipulation, our layers, grouping, and other utilities. The Insert tab has commands in them that will bring other objects into our file. Annotate is where you'll have all of your controls for your text, your dimensions, your leaders, tables, and other tools. 
layout controls the different sections the way you lay out your drawing. So if any of these commands that you want to get to, you just click on the appropriate tab, find a command like the line command here, which is in the draw panel, left click on it, and that will start the line command. Now I can draw a line. When you're in the middle of a command, you can get out of it in a couple of different ways. One is to press the escape key. The escape key is nice and easy and straightforward. If you hit that, it will unselect anything you've selected. It will cancel any command that you're in, no matter where you're at in that command. So you'll use the escape key quite often. But if I draw a line and I press enter, I get this menu and I can hit enter and it will act like I'm canceling out the command. If I start another command again, as an example, press enter, I can hit cancel or go to some of these other objects. Now if I'm drawing another line, or any command for that matter, and I hit the enter key, that will cancel my command as well. So there are a lot of different ways to do everything. So that's why I wanted to go over this stuff with you. Another way to execute commands in AutoCAD is through what's called the command line. It's found at the bottom of the screen. That's this right here. When you put your mouse over it, it will highlight, to let you know that you are selecting it. You can directly input commands right into it by typing on the command line, like the word line. Now you notice here as well that as I started typing, it also popped up right by my cursor. Well, this is called dynamic input. The dynamic input is sort of like a smaller condensed version of the command line. What's nice about it is that it gives me the visual information that I need from my command line right at my crosshairs. So I don't have to stop looking at the center of this circle and move down to the bottom of my screen to read the command line, then look back up. It kind of helps. But you can turn that off if you'd like. You come down here to the status bar area, and if I click this icon right here, it looks like a plus sign with a rectangle on the bottom, or I can press the F12 button. So now when I start typing in the line command, it comes in on the command line. And I get this pop-up of commands that have the word line in them. That's part of AutoCAD's command line autocomplete. So it automatically completes some of your words for you, and it propagates a list up here where you can get to some of your commands. And we'll talk a little bit more about the command line later on in more detail. Toolbars and the pull down menus were standard operating procedure in AutoCAD up until the ribbon was added back in release 2009. They're still there and can be turned on at any time. If you've used AutoCAD prior to the release 2009, you might want to turn those back on. It might help you be more familiar with it. You can always switch your workspace environments to the AutoCAD classic mode, and that's up here. Click on this little arrow here. And if you select AutoCAD Classic, the ribbon goes away and it will also open up tool palettes and it will also bring in some toolbars. You have your classic toolbars and some other commands and the command line is down at the bottom of the screen stretching all the way across back and forth. Now if you're much more comfortable working this way, then go right ahead. However, I suggest you don't. I found it to be much more efficient to use the ribbon and use the keyboard as your primary source of input. Here's one reason why. There are some tools over here. These are your basic line commands and polygons, rectangles, arcs, circles, etc. If I want to use them, I can. I come over here, I click on them, and it works just the same way. That starts the line command, and I've drawn my line. But then I have modification tools over here on this toolbar. I can come over here and click on any of the commands, like the erase command, and start erasing. If you don't want to work in this and you want to put it back, just come right back up here to the Quick Access Toolbar, click on the box, and click on the Drafting and Annotation tab. I suggest that this is how you work. This is how I'm going to be working throughout the video. You'll have an easier time following along because I show you where to go in the ribbon to find the commands. I'll even show you some tips and some tricks on how to find commands that are lost or that you can't find. Now that's kind of just a basic overview of what everything is. And all these things that we talked about here, we will cover in greater detail later on.